It looks like we're set to go. Hello, welcome. This is CJ for Black Men in America coming with a special exclusive interview. We have Vester Banner, a spectacular film producer. He's gonna tell you more about himself than I can. It's gonna be a spectacular interview. Welcome. Uh, thank you, man. Thank you for having me. I appreciate you having me on. So how about you explain to everybody what, you know, what it is you do? Uh, well, right now, the, the main focus is uh, filmmaking. Uh, that's, that's, my, that's my bread and butter, uh, as, as I said. Um, basically, I'm a writer um, by trade. Uh, that's my main focus in filmmaking is writing. Um, sometimes I produce and sometimes I direct, but mostly it's writing. Um, and it's anything between television series or feature films or even shorts, I do it all. <laughs> Yeah, like as I was looking into you um, doing the interview prep, I saw you're in a, a vast array of spaces. So like I said, I, I've seen, you know, short films with like narratives, but also like PSA and ads and mm -hmm. also animation and all types of things. Yeah, I never want to be too hunkered down on a certain genre. I, I kind of want to like kind of like flex my muscles and my creativity. Uh, it's the same thing when I do in like, like entrepreneurship. I do the same thing. I don't want to like be bogged down my two, you know, one thing. Uh, so um, shorts is like actually like the easiest one you can do because they don't take long to produce at all or even write up um, the max like I would say for a short that I you know I do is like somewhere between seven to ten minutes so if we can get it done within that week time frame you know we'll do it and so um, so yeah it just started off being being that way in shorts and PSAs and I so said I do through a barometer of certain things uh, mental health being one um, but actually, that's been the biggest one so far as the mental health one. Uh, I've actually done three films based on that. Um, and then another one was on animal cruelty. Uh, we're supposed to be, you know, I'm supposed to be doing another one on uh, a musical. It was like a music drama. So I have that going. Uh, and, th and then another one was supposed to be based on just another drama uh, that dealt with writer's block. So it's like it's different avenues that I, I, I travel down when I come to my writing. Yeah, absolutely. Like I said, you definitely got your hands in all types of pots and definitely keeping them stirring at all different rates. Can you yeah, yeah, even the, even the features in the TV series, they're like, you know, they're, um, they're basically, as you said, animation, they're action, they're drama, they're comedy. You know, I just, I try to dip my hands in everything just to see what I'm good at. And then I just go from there. Dabbling in so many spaces right now in the current climate, how has COVID affected that? It's actually kind of interesting. Um, I was just talking to my parents the other day saying that it's actually kind of hindered some of my creativity. Uh, depending on what I was talking about, as far as like the animation was concerned, because you know the animation is supposed to be you know kind of like a up, uplifting, up joys kind of thing, and like we're not living in that time frame right now. Like it's a little different, so it's a little hard to get into that mindset. Um, but ironically, most of the uh, the creativity that has come from it is actually I've actually been diving into other stuff, which is more like apocalyptic almost, <laughs> but like I've never felt more creatively uh, wise into that genre that I have been now. Um, just case in point, um, I've actually been doing a lot of like uh, study on like space. So uh, just diving into that, into that world, understanding what the ramifications of that, um, you know, space could be for our, for our planet itself, climate change, all that stuff. And so d doing all that research, it kind of like brought out my other creativity side with the other products that I wanted to do. And was like, oh, okay, well, I can do, I can implement this, I can implement that. So as far as that's concerned, you know, it's brought, it's brought in my creativity side on that side of it, as far as research is concerned. But for the other side, it's, a little, it's, it's hindering a little bit. So I have to kind of like bring myself back and uh, just like take myself away from what's going on out of reality for a little bit, just to even kind of like write uh, certain, certain genres. Yeah, it's incredible that as artists, um, I play music, so I kind of can kind of relate that, that we have to, have to adapt. Our creativity kind of has to adapt to what's going on around us and yeah, how yeah, you're yeah. able to adapt, even though it might have been taking you, throwing you off in one aspect, you're able to feel that creatively in another aspect. And, you know, that's, that's very, that's such an incredible skill that artists need to have, especially now with COVID just throwing yeah, you off. Yeah, yeah. Right. Like, I remember the first thing somebody told me when I was uh, coming into filmmaking, they said, be adaptable, basically. And basically what they were just talking about was make sure you're, you dive into everything because you can't be a one trick pony pretty much anymore. You have to be in all, multiple facets of the industry. And so, I mean, it's the same thing with creativity. You adapt, adapt to what your environment is and, you know, you'll, you'll come out with some amazing, some amazing ideas. 
Absolutely. How did you um, break into the industry, especially as a young black man? You know, like, how did you how did you really, you know, get your foothold into so many spaces? It seems like you're, you're really been able to get your foot in a lot of different spaces in, in the realm of writing. Yeah, normally when um, a door opens, you know, they always say walk through it. And so I just kept walking through any door that kept opening. And if any, it wasn't a door there, I made one myself. Uh, but the idea pretty much came from uh, or stems from my father. Um, he, he noticed I was taking an interest in um, like writing. And so he told me about, you know, writing for movies and stuff. And then I was like, you know, they write for movies. <laughs> so I was a little confused. And so I did some research on it. Uh, did some workshop classes. Uh, eventually, it took me a minute to actually get out to California. Uh, but when I did, I just, I, as I said, I just threw myself into pretty much everything I could just to, you know, understand what filmmaking was all about. Um, I took it from a different side, um, you know, just understanding the, not even the business side, but just the creativity side as well. Um, like I said, the first person I met, uh, they said, you know, be adaptable. And so that's what I did. You know, somebody asked me to do an acting gig. I said, okay, I'll do it. Um, they wanted me to help them direct something. Okay. <laughs> you wanted me to help produce. I was like, okay. Uh, I didn't say no a lot when I was first doing it. But then once I started getting into the, uh, once I started doing my own projects, I had to, I had to start saying no, unfortunately. Uh, but it was, it was for the better because, you know, I, you know, I started doing my own, I started doing my own thing and I started uh, understanding what I really liked about this business. And so um, I started doing, you know, my shorts, I started doing uh, other writing projects. Uh, fortunately, uh, one of the shorts that I did, uh, it just happened to catch people's attention. Um, ironic, you know, you, you know, you always have this idea that, you know, you'll write this, this grand masterpiece and it'll go on to bring you all glory and everything. And uh, I always told myself that, um, you know, if I ever got the opportunity, even if it wasn't something like that, was to never take it for granted. And so um, I'm, a very, I'm a kind of a spiritual guy. So, you know, I told God, I was, I was basically saying, you know, I don't need all the accolades to come from this short. I just need, you know, I just need people to resonate with it. And I, that's what I, that's all I wanted. And sure enough, that's, that's what, what the ticker was. Basically, it was the fact that people resonated with the short that I had wrote. And, you know, we were just getting hot, me and my director uh, was just getting high remarks the whole time. You know, every time we showed it, everybody just kept coming up to us saying how much they resonated with it, how much it meant to them that we did this. And so that short actually opened up other doors. And so it didn't, as I said, it didn't bring the awards that, you know, that you would, you would hope that it would accustom to, but it did bring other things that I wouldn't have never thought it would have brought. That's, yeah, that's great. And that's such a great lesson to other young artists is to always walk through those doors, especially early on when you have an opportunity, don't pass it up, even if it seems, you know, trivial, if you can, you know, obviously, as you said, at a certain point, you're going to have to Say yeah, no. at a certain point, you just got to dive into it. And so if you, if you got the opportunity, go ahead and dive. <laughs> yes, but uh, that doesn't mean you're supposed to say yes to every project. You know, it just means you, should, you say let, yes to some projects, uh, the ones that at least that can, uh, you know, that can help you grow as an artist or even grow as a creative. Absolutely. Um, circling back to something you said earlier about the, um, the mental health stuff. Um, mm -hmm. What made you really um, favor that or get into that space um, particularly? It's it's kind of a stigma uh, in our world, and I wanted to kind of like destigmatize that. And so, the one of the things that I started uh, researching on was uh, Alzheimer's and dementia. And so, um, because my aunt had it, and so I wanted to kind of do something that was kind of like dedicated to her in a way, um, because she was suffering through it, and she was actually one of the only family members at the time that was suffering through that. And so, I wanted to just kind of understand where she was coming from. Um, just, you know, as a family member wise, just mental wise, you know, as I said, research. And then um, I remember my mom also saying that she, uh, you know, she thought I could do like Hallmark movies. And so I thought maybe, maybe this short could kind of be like this Hallmark movie talking about, you know, Alzheimer's disease. And so, and so I started doing some more research and that's when I was like, well, I like chocolate. So I was like, well, I'll do some research on chocolate and see if it has anything to do with, you know, the memory. Uh, of course, uh, I found I found out that it did, and I was like, "Oh, okay. Well, this is good. I can keep going with this." And so I, that's how I developed the idea for the chocolate shop. Um, and so that's, that's basically how that got started. And that was actually the short I was talking about earlier was the chocolate shop, the one that opened the door for me. Uh, the other one was a PSA on uh, suicide. I had lost a friend uh, to it a while back. And, um, and at the time, you know, it, it didn't really like hit me at, you know, of how much it would impact my life. Uh, Cause I myself honestly have gone, you know, through thoughts like that. 
And so I was like, well, why don't I write about it? And at the time I like, you know, I was really into basketball. And so I did, I, I wrote the short, uh, but I never, did, never went anywhere with it. And it wasn't until I got out to California uh, where there was this uh, PSA competition that I thought, oh, okay, maybe this is like the opportunity I can use to actually do this short. And so I did. And then, so I did the short and it was with a young lady named Summer. Uh, she did an amazing job on it. Uh, we actually won some oh, quite a few awards <laughs> from the short, which also brought, opened up more doors. And it was just a PSA. It was like a one minute PSA. Uh, so that also opened up more doors. Uh, but it's also uh, given me the uh, ability to actually, you know, to talk to other people about it. You know, other people have also come up to me and tell me how affected they've been by it. And uh, that was really special, especially this one lady. She actually, I met her at randomly <laughs> at a film festival and she told me how much she loved it. And so that's what, that's what, that's like, if I, if, you know, if that short could help save one life, it was worth it. Um, so, and, that, and that's, that was the mindset I had going into doing that PSA. Uh, the other PSA that I just got done it's called the many faces of one. That one is on all the other mental health that we go through, bipolar, um, schizophrenia, uh, paranoia, all of them. It just touches bases on all of them. And, it's, it, and I wanted to do it in a kind of like a very creative way. So the actress who's in the film, she actually is a dancer. And so her many dance moves actually affect um, how she feels in, in the short. And that replicates the bipolar disorder or the, uh, you know, the schizophrenia. And so when I was talking to her about it, she was saying that, you know, a close family member of hers uh, deals with it. And so I, um, that's what I said, again, it resonated with people. And so uh, when I, I got the news out about it, uh, I, was, I was basically saying the same thing I did with the other PSA. I was like, as long as it brings awareness and, you know, destigmatizes, you know, it, I'm okay with it. You know, I didn't have to win all these awards or accolades kind of thing. And so I actually like really uh, diving into, like, like I said, those type of um, critical thinking type, you know, shorts, because it helps people to think outside the box. It helps people to know that, you know, there are people out there like you, you're not alone in all this. Um, there's, and there's other people know that there are people like this that need the help. Um, and, you know, they're not like, they're not crazy. You know, they actually have some type of mental illness and they, that they need help with. And so and that's what I go to in my shorts. I want to make sure that it brings that message out more so than anything else. That's incredible because um, I'm somebody who has dealt with mental health issues. And mm -hmm. I thought what was so effective about the, the, the ads were that they were so artistic. Like you said, they weren't just cut and dry, not just well shot yeah. PSAs. They were, right. they were really art and they were able to visualize you know, the mental illness in a way that is very effective in a way that people wouldn't expect, you know, to mm. see. And I think that is very powerful in a way because that stigma you talked about earlier prevents people from really seeing, you know, it's from really understanding, the, you know, right. these, these illnesses when they see them in their family and sometimes just visualizing it in a different way might help, you know, could save a life in the long run. It could really. Exactly. Help. That's, yeah, that's all that, I was. That's incredible work. I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, that's very powerful. And the same thing with the, the short film as well, like just uh, the, the tribute and just how effective it was in terms of genuine. You can almost tell that it came from a heartfelt place before I even knew the backstory to it. I could, yeah, you know, yeah, I, that, that, I could feel yeah, that there was passion connection. behind it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, but yeah, everything has a connection to it. So I wanted to, I wanted to make sure that everyone got to see that message for what it was. Yeah, that's that's incredible work. And um, what other um, projects do you have? Anything exciting coming down the pipeline, maybe further down? Yeah, yeah. So this animation that I've been talking about, <laughs> I have been working on this for quite a long time. Um, the reason why I started working on it was because of my goddaughter. I was babysitting her one night. She was at three. She was like three at the time. She's now 10. As a matter of fact, she just texted me, which is actually kind of funny. Um, but um, I was babysitting her and we were watching uh, a cartoon. And the cartoon, like the, the logic of the cartoon was a little bit more mature for her age. And so everything was pretty much going over her head, thank God. <laughs> so, but I'm watching this and I'm like, oh, let's, go, let's turn to something else. Um, I, but at the time I had did a um, children's book on Barack Obama because I wanted, you know, the kids to know that, you know, you know, kids like us, hey, we can walk up into the White House too. You know, if we, you know, we set our minds to it and our, you know, our hearts and our desires, you know, one day you can be president. And so I did that book pretty much as a dedication to her. Um, and I showed her this one page in the book. Uh, it was him being Spider-Man, his favorite superhero, Spider-Man. 
And so she, uh, she got all excited and she was like, oh, can you make me into a uh, superhero? And then like, the funny thing is that hit me. I was all like, of course she wants, she doesn't want to see a, she wants to see a, she doesn't want to see a boy in a children's book. She wants to see herself. I was like, dummy. So <laughs> I was like, leave it to a three-year-old to basically, you know, set you straight. So I got like literally the day, uh, that night uh, when after her mother came and picked her up, I got cracking on uh, making her into a superhero. And uh, you know, nothing was like really meshing at the time. And I think at the time she just wanted me to make a, a children's book about her. Um, but uh, what kind of came out of that was this idea for an animation TV show about children who are gifted with musical superpowers. And so, um, because over the course of time, she had a little sister that was born um, and they're all, they all have musical names. My goddaughter's name is Melody. Her sister's name is Lyric. Her brother's name is Maestro. And she just had another new baby sister born. Her name is Symphony. And so I was like, oh, okay, well, there's my, there's my show. I was like, it's, um, you know, as I said, it's a musical superhero show. So I, I started wondering, you know, if it wasn't just her not seeing herself in these cartoons or, you know, all these children's books, um, you know, who else is not seeing themselves? In the children's books, you know, or in the animation, and so it's a very diverse uh, animation show that comes from different cultures and different backgrounds about these kids who have to pretty much band together in order to save their town, and they have to use their musical powers in order to do that. And so, um, over the course of time, meeting with you know people, other filmmakers, other animators, getting just getting ideas from them, um, the show was originally called The Half Notes. Uh, which is what I still own the rights to, but we're going to make an older version of the show now after talking to a producer and we're, and we're calling it the musical guardians. And so that's the show uh, that we're working on right now is the musical guardians is a more older version of the show because my goddaughter now, as I said, is 10 years old. You know, she doesn't want to see a kid at six anymore. She wants to see maybe a 13, 15, 16 year old going, you know, going to battle basically with the superhero powers. Uh, so that's the show we're working on now. Um, I actually pitched it to Disney and Nickelodeon uh so far um but the main thing that the biggest thing that came out of the accomplishment of like not just pitching to these studios was the fact that we were able to sign on a producer to the show who's actually has his hand um in a lot of different animations and so that's been the biggest that's been the biggest thing for me right now is to kind of like get that animation out there and growing and develop it into the way that it needs to be developed so i can get it uh, pitched to the right studio who wants to see the show and get it made I can't wait. As someone with a five-year-old, I can oh, yeah, okay, okay. understand <laughs> and be excited. And as someone who is a lifelong comic book fanatic, I also just love yep. any type of superhero type stories, any type of defend the city, the, you know, guardians of, mm. and a musician. Yeah, right. Speaking yeah, my language, musician, so yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm super excited and optimistic to see that once it's brought to life, once it's in full swing. And like, if I definitely understand aging, the heroes up to, to match the inspiration to keep up. With. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, and plus it wasn't like, you know, the uh, the generation that I was trying to target at first is not going to sit there and watch the show. I mean, I remember I, uh, when I was a kid, I would watch shows that I wasn't supposed to watch. It wasn't, in, you know, but because it, they were older, I was like, oh, I want to get there one day, you know, kind of thing. So it just makes sense to kind of like just age them up and just, and, to, uh, and just you know, we'll see what kind of potential we can actually unlock with these kids. That's great. Yeah, they, that's great. We need more quality shows. I feel like a lot of the animation these days for kids has been dumbed down a lot mm. more so than it was back in our day or back in the, the days a little bit earlier. But in, in terms of that, what, what kind of inspired you? Like, what, what where are your influences? What type of stuff did you like as a kid that you think kind of shaped your style now as a writer? Well, the funny thing is, growing up as a kid, you, we saw, uh, especially if you grew up in the 90s, you saw a lot of kid empowerment type stuff. So everything was about like, you know, as I said, kid empowerment. So it was basically, you know, you saw Power Rangers, <laughs> you saw uh, X-Men, the, the animated series, uh, Johnny Quest was out there, uh, but they were all like kids, you know, going out and doing, you know, what you wanted to do basically it was be a hero or to just have some type of freedom um, but to have powers along the way was pretty cool. So um, basically all the shows that I saw basically kind of like shaped my mindset and to go in that direction to be kind of like this epic uh, journey almost of, of empowerment. And that was, and that's what I really want. That's what I really want to get out of all my projects is to kind of like inspire people to in whatever avenue I do, whatever aspect of projects that I create. I just always want to inspire and entertain people. That's that's been the biggest thing that I've always wanted to do as far as my projects is, is concerned. 
Sounds like you're really on the way here in the space, ready to slam dunk it in the industry. And I'm just so excited for these projects to, you know, come to fruition and for your, your continued success. Is there anything else you'd like to add or promote or, you know, any advice to young writers out there or anything? Uh, yeah. Seen? So, um, as I said, I've always, um, always wanted to keep my mindset growing and, you know, researching and um, as far as that's concerned. So, I mean, the advice I would have to any writer, young writer out there is to always, like your biggest asset would be research, uh, to never stop growing, keep an open mind no matter what you believe in, because if you close your mind up to certain aspects of life or even just ideas, you would hinder your creativity. Uh, one of the things I grew up in uh, was a Christian household. So we, we don't, uh, necessarily believe in evolution. Um, but there's a certain type of evolution that you can believe in that can still, that you can still use for your creativity and be like, oh, I can still use it this way or I can use it that way. So if somebody were to come to me as, you know, completely disregard the fact that evolution exists, that hinders me as a creative and I can't come up with anything anymore because now, like, you know, maybe I wanted to do a, a you know, a series on a, a evolution, but then I wanted to do it in a, in a Christian creative way. And so my advice is to never, to never uh, close your mind to anything new. To always keep an open mind. Um, have a second hobby um, <laughs> because eventually one day you're going to get burnt out and, you know, you never want to get burnt out. You always want to be excited for the next project or the next thing that you have going. So I, I always say secretly have a, a second, maybe a side project going that, that has nothing to do with all the other projects. Uh, just because you can always go to there, to, you know, to kind of get your mind away from everything. And so one of the things that I do is um, me and my brother, uh, we're entrepreneurship type minded people. So we always try to come up with like different business ideas or, diff or just set out with different goals that we have. Uh, so really um, over the course of this pandemic, we've actually gotten really into uh, wine. <laughs> so we, uh, we actually are starting yeah. a uh, wine blog and blog basically, because uh, mm -hmm. what we started doing was tastings. Uh, this is before the pandemic. We started doing tastings and uh, we thought, you know, who, who, what other people out there are basically, you know, not understanding how to do a tasting because we were rookies at it too. So we were saying if there's, you know, if we were the rookies doing it, maybe there are other rookies out there who are trying to like dive into it as well. And so we wanted to kind of like uh, blog our journey, you know, while we're doing all of this. So we have that going for us. Um, but yeah, but that's, I mean, but that's just basically the main thing is just to keep, keep an open mind on everything and don't like, don't hinder your creativity. Um, and to, to always ask questions, basically, you know, to always keep learning. That's the biggest thing to always is just, just keep learning everything because the more you learn, the more you can broaden your projects to new horizons and actually open up a, a slew of <laughs> ideas that you never thought was going to come out. Like, like literally, like over the course of this pandemic, I've been researching a lot on space. And I can say my creativity has just been like going through the roof. I never would have thought of most of the stuff had I had not researched a lot of the things that I didn't know already. Yeah, I totally agree. That's amazing. And yeah, I totally agree. Continuing to expand your mind. It's just as an artist, there's there's no greater benefit. Just right. Amazing, amazing advice. Amazing first interview here for the site. This was amazing. I really enjoyed this conversation. I'm really excited about the possibility of a spectacular young black man in Hollywood in the space writing things from his heart, you know, for, for the kids, for, you know, for mental health awareness, for good causes, you know, there, there needs to be some good energy that's not about just corporate greed these days behind the scenes about making money. I mean, you can always feel when there is heart and passion in a project from a writer. So I'm just very excited to see what comes in the future for you. Yeah, I appreciate that, man. Uh, and same for you, because I understand you're into music as well. So I, that's why I say that. I think that's why your father got involved, because it was all like we could always, <laughs> I could always mesh with the, uh, the, uh, the the musicians. And when I talk about my animation, they ask me so many questions. It's actually kind of funny. I'm like, no, I need to ask you questions. You're the musician. <laughs> but well, they always like, ask I play guitar and the X-Men are my favorite superheroes ever. And I'm from the 90s. So that X-Men animated series had that, you know, that guitar intro. If you need like a guitar intro for, for your series, I, I'm your man for that. <laughs> All right, yo, for real, for real. Yeah, I might have to talk to you about that because uh, one of the characters in the show, his name is uh, Pick. His, well, his nickname is Pick. Uh, he's a, he's the guitarist, obviously, the guitar pick. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, I may, I may be having to ask you 
few questions down the road about that, just because uh, that's one of the instruments that are going to be used in the show. And I have to know, you know, what's the difference between um, the different chords that he plays, how he plays it, the strumming of it, of it all, you know, should he use a certain guitar, how many different guitars are, are out there that he can use kind of thing where, you know, could each one have a certain power or something like that. So it's like, it's very interesting to, uh, to like dive into that when you realize that music itself is like, um, you know, has it's its own like language. And so it's very beautiful to understand that and to know that it's its own language and to adapt that into the creativity side of an animation superhero show and then to kind of like mesh it, the two worlds together. It's kind of like, yeah, I've never seen it before. How can we, you know, how can we actually really work on that? So I'm always down to like collaborate with anybody who's, will, who's wanting to collaborate. That's, the, that's one of actually the most fun parts for me is to collaborate. So definitely, definitely. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> yeah we'll, we'll definitely be in touch. And that attention to detail is definitely appreciated too from audiences and like mm -hmm. musicians, especially like they'll notice. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah, I don't want to, that's what I don't want to do with all that and ender my, <laughs> mess it all up in the first take and be like, hey, like oh, he did it terribly. Nah, I want to make sure that they be all like, yo, that's that's dope. I do that in my my segments and or my gigs and too. So I, I definitely want to, uh, definitely want to implement all that. And plus it's an appreciation, you know, it is, Letting the art is letting the person who does the art or has that art of the musical talent know that you took time to actually learn their craft in order to implement it into your world. And so it's that, as I said, it's that representation that everybody's looking for. You actually took the time to actually be all like, dang, I'm, I'm seen now. They, they see me for who I am. Absolutely. That mutual respect between, you know, different mediums of art. That's beautiful. Well, that's awesome. This is an excellent conversation. We're just about out of time today, but this is an excellent first interview. We're going to have this up on the site ASAP and we'll be in touch from there. I'm sure there's more we can collaborate on in the future. Yeah, that's definitely. A definitely. Fantastic so I'm looking, first episode of this interview series. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Definitely. All right. Oh.